My message tonight is, hey, I once taught this to you two years ago. All right, if you remember this, you're the hey. Remember this one? Yod Hey, Vav Hey. It is where we bring this name Yahweh. Ever heard the word Yahweh? Now, the real name of God is not God. All right? God is a pronoun. But if you check, it's now. The English word has made it as a noun, like the name of God. However, it's a pronoun. It can be a false god. It can be God of Hindu. It can be God of Indians. So when we say God, God is not the name of God whom we worship. It's not his name. And why it remains a mystery? It is because God has always hidden his name. Even the location where he stays, he has hidden it. God is a mysterious. Please, I need your attention, everybody, because of what we're about to do right now. God is mysterious. Hmm. Somebody say, I'm here, prophet. I am here, prophet. Come on, say, I'm here, prophet. So, when we say Yahweh, Yahweh is just these letters here, which are taken from Y, H, so V, H. It gives us the word Yahweh. Come on, if you're hearing me, raise up your hands. I'm hearing you, prophet. Alright. Now, if you check here, there's a word Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. And we're not going to go into the teaching of yod hey vav hey, But I just want us to talk about this word here. What does it mean? And why is it repeated? Hey, hey. Now, that word there, hey. When you say Yahweh, you mean yod hey vav hey. Are you understanding? When you say Yahweh, it's just, you know, abbreviations where we take letters and make a name Yahweh but he is not just Yahweh it's Yod Hey Vav Hey Yahweh now listen to this so in Tetragrammaton you learn the, the, the real name of God not what Sunday school told you or what internet tells you so God is a mystery that he actually people forgot his name even in Israel they could not know him no wonder Moses said, but who would I say has sent me? Because even Moses didn't even know his name. Because he only revealed himself as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he was not saying his name. And he would reveal himself by other names. Like Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah El Shaddai. Jehovah this. Jehovah this. But his name is not Jehovah. So his name, so his name has always been hidden. Are, are you following this? Yes, now when he spoke to Moses, he said you should say Yahweh has sent you. Yahweh. When he was saying Yahweh, he said Yod Hey Vav Hey. We're not going to talk about Yod Hey Vav Hey today. It's a teaching solid on YouTube. I, I already taught you about Tetragrammaton. However, I need your attention tonight. Let's talk about the hey. Somebody say hey. hey. Now, my message tonight is hey. That's my message tonight. Somebody say hey. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Are you here? So this hey in Hebrew, in Hebrew they do not use letters. Every letter has got a number that is attached to it and a symbol symbolizing that number. So this hey is symbolized as H. 
That's on Yahweh. It doesn't come hey. They only remove H. And this H has a symbol of, of a hand of a person. Are you here? Which is the letter five. What I'm teaching you today to help you. It will, it will help you. I'm telling you. The reason why people, you know, they think, oh, Hawaii, God is not answering. Why? Sometimes you are, you are dealing with a strange God. Say, hey. hey. So he is revealed with a symbol of five. And a number which represents the following things. One, it represents breath. It also represents life. It represents grace. Hello? What I mean? Are you there? Yes. Say hey. So, if I say life, you should say, hey, life, hey. grace, hey. breath. Hey. Now, this type of breath is not just a breath like the way you're breathing. No, it is the one that is ahead. <sighs> Do that. Exactly. So, when you say, <sighs> actually, you're saying, hey, listen to me. Listen to this, listen to this. I want you to hear this. That breath is actually the, the good illustration of hey is a breath. When a person says, <sighs> when you do that, when you do, <sighs> when you do that now, you do, <sighs> that one you just did right now. You just, in Hebrew, you just did hey. <coughs> this is why when a child is born, the first thing the child will do is to do hey. Is to name the name of God. The day you will be dying, the last thing you will do on your, last, on your bed is to take the last breath. Hey. So you have to mention his name. Oh, well, when you are born, when you are dying, this name has to be mentioned. Hey. However, you will not learn these things. What you learn, what you learn is Yahweh. So you're gonna go in church and they say Yahweh. You don't even know what they're talking about. If the devil can ask you, what is Yahweh? That's what the devil said. I know Paul, and I know Jesus. Who are you? Now imagine the devil knows Yahweh and you don't. Do you know the devil? If you read the Bible, he is cast down on earth. Hello? Are you aware that the devil is cast down? Are you aware that in Job chapter 1, the Bible says when God had a meeting in heaven, he was also in heaven attending a meeting. I thought he's cast down. And God said, hey devil, where are you coming from? The question was not what are you doing here? Or how did you enter here? How are you now a minister? Where are you coming from? He was expected in the meeting. He said, I was moving up and down on earth. <laughs> so you wonder that which part of heaven is this? You realize that God, there is a, 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 there is a certain part, a, a certain quarter of heaven where he has reserved that the devil can go in. Because God being the judge, Hello? He has to have a courtroom. And he has to give the devil an access to this courtroom. So that he can receive some questions. Remember the Holy Spirit is your lawyer, our advocate. So there is a... <laughs> say your Hey. Say hey. Now, let's just go this. I want us to deal with this word, hey. Now, hey is represented by this letter. What letter? H. H. 
in Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed. That word breathed is the word hey. Did you hear that? That word breathed is what? Hey. Rakabaraba. Meaning that even if something is dead, the Bible says God created it, but it did not have life. Do you know we have people right now who God has created ideas in them? They have got business plans, business proposals, relationships that are just created, but there's no life. All you need is hay. There is a certain breath that when God releases it, whatever is not living and active, it has no choice but to live. You're not understanding this. In Ezekiel 47 verse 1 to 10, God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to the dry bones. And the Bible says he prophesied. But when he spoke the prophecy, the Bible says the dead bones, it says all the bones became dead bodies and there was no life. So God said, prophesy to the wind to breathe to the dry bones. The word breathe is the word hay. There is a certain hay. There is a certain breath that when it just touches you, what was dead comes alive. You are not serious about it. Look at your neighbor and say, Hey! Hey, ya rabushki pregida. Tell your neighbor now, say that business of yours. Say, Hey! What, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you prophesying to your neighbor? Life, grace, are you hear that? Yes. Life, breath, and grace. So the reason, listen to this. Listen to this. It's like resurrecting the dead. You know, you're not resurrecting the dead. Resurrecting the dead. The Bible says that in, 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 in uh, uh, Thessalonians, it says the dead shall hear what? So they shall hear first the trumpet. He says, and the dead shall hear it. And it shall rise first. Before we have all heard that Jesus' rapture is taking place, the Bible says the trumpet shall be sounded. And those who are dead shall hear the trumpet first. And they shall resurrect. What shall resurrect them? It's not the coming of Christ. But it's the sound of the trumpet they shall hear. This is why if you want to raise a dead person, you need to have an angel who can blow a trumpet. Because the dead can only hear that trumpet and they can resurrect. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Are, are you here? Listen to this. The Bible says, and God breathed. The word breath there is the word hey. And God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to the wind to come, to breathe, is the word hey. And it's actually like H E, the word H E. Hey. Say hey. hey. No, say louder. Say hey. hey. I, are you here, somebody? Say hey. hey. Now, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. So, if we say hey, what letter are we using here? H. H. Please mark these things, they are very important. Very, very important. When this breath comes, when you come in contact with this breath, you have no reason but to resurrect. Wait a minute. Anyone else you watching me now, I speak a hey over your life. May this wind, may this breath breathe over your face. Breathe over your finances. Breathe over your sickness. Hey! Because of time, let's go to Romans 4.17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God, who gives life to the dead and caused those things which do not exist 
as though they did. 18. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider... His so shall his descendants what? So shall his descendants be. So shall his descendants be. We are dealing here with a man who was already dead, a man whose wife was already what? The womb was already what? Dead. dead. But what resurrected the womb of this woman? That her womb was dead. And what made a man who was 95 years of age to impregnate a woman who was 91 years? Let's go. Let's get it. Genesis 17 verse 5. The Bible says in Genesis 17 verse 5, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. Now, I have a problem here. That God changes the name of Abram to Abraham. And the name still sounds the same. The only thing God added to his name was hey. You see? No, you, 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 you are too late. You're too late. You're too late. You're too late. The only thing that God added. Uh, say hey. He said, I am changing your name now. God says, I am putting hey. Breath, grace, and life. From that day, Abram became Abraham. And the Bible says, so shall your descendants be. You are not getting it. You are not getting it. What would change a dead man into a living man is the breath of God. Hey. In chapter 17, from verse 15, let me read it. It says, then God, after dealing with Abraham, he goes to his wife. Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah. What does he add? Yes. What does God add? Yes. Hey. So he looks at the wife. The womb is dead. God says, hey. And the womb is erected. <laughs> he looks at Abraham. Hey. And the man resurrected. Look at him and say, hey. hey. <laughs> Can you imagine Abraham? God said, what's your name? He said, I am Abraham. He says, I'm changing it. So God just breath. Hey. And his name changed to Abraham. And immediately God says what? Go back to Romans chapter 4, verse 18. You know what God said? He said to Abraham, when God breath in his name. He says, who contrary to hope in, he believed so that he became the father of many nations. Go back to 17 verse 5 of Genesis. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For what? I have made you a father. Listen to me. Listen. Some of you want to take over. I want you to have international doors. I want my life to open. I want things to happen. All you need is hay. So, tonight, there is the breath of God that I want you to prophesy over your life, everything you do, anything you touch. There must be God's breath. God said, breathe to these bones. He said, breathe. So Ezekiel prophesied as he was commanded. And he said, oh, you breath, breathe unto these bodies, the breath of God. I want you to raise up your two hands. Not as raising up your hands, but as unto God. As you raise up those hands, I want you to take a deep breath in and out. But before you do that breath, 
I want you to believe that this breath that will be coming in you, it will carry the life of God. The moment it will come in you, everything that is in you shall live. Say, Father, I speak as a descendant of Abraham that let your breath quicken me. Give me life. Listen, as you raise up your hands, this breath we're talking about It is not the life that comes and go. No. When God breath on a man, he became a living soul. There's a breath of God that you, most people do not know. There's the breath of God that comes from him. You see, there are moments I breathe on this microphone. And you people don't even know what I'm doing. I breathe over this microphone. And I speak the breath of God to move. There is the breath. The Bible said the breath of God has given me life. It says the breath of God has given me life. The word breath. comes from the root word hey it's written as h e as you raise up your hands say rikama antofraka jaradikski protos rakabadosh i speak to every person hear the voice of the lord wherever you are your situation Everything around you and about you. When this breath comes upon you, let everything about you live. I speak the breath of Almighty according to Job 33 verse 4. Which says, the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The breath of Almighty gives me life. This was Job, a man who lost everything. And he stood up and called for hay when he said that. Four chapters after, everything of him was restored. Everything. He said, The breath of Almighty. The breath of Almighty giveth me life. Gives me life. The breath, the hay. That breath of the touch, that breath of God, it will give you life. Father, in the name of Jesus, everybody watching me now near or far, I speak your breath over them. Your breath over them. Your breath over them. Your breath over their children. Life over their finances. Life over their children. Life over their projects and proposals. Life of their employment, their jobs. Life of their relationships. Their marital marriages. Everything they're trying to do. Life in the name of Jesus. I speak this to your marital status. Life. And the only thing the devil comes to do, the Bible says he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy what? The hay. If there is a thing he hates, is the life of God over you. He comes to destroy the life of God. What God has breathed. And he did first to Adam. The man was supposed not to die. But God said, because you listen to Satan, you shall die. So the first thing the devil stole was hay. And if the devil sees that your money is there, you're moving well financially, you are happy, the only thing he comes is to steal that out of you. This is why we are rebuking him tonight. 
and he will never come and have access ever again over you and your children and your children's children. This is why God, he just went to Abraham and he said, I'm changing you to a hey. I'm putting H in your name. That's why Abraham, nobody could steal anything from him because he had this breath in his name. The dead womb had nothing but to resurrect. There was no scientist who could describe it. What happened to a woman of 90 years, 91 years being pregnant? It has never been done. It has never been heard. But when he comes, even to such a woman can conceive. When the life of God comes, even to such a situation, it has no nothing to, to do but to bow to the breath of Almighty. Job was about to die. He had diseases. The Bible says he had sores all over his body. His marriage failed. He was divorced. His wife left him. All his children died. All his money gone. And the only thing that he had to look for was the breath. He said the breath of Almighty, the hay. When he called for this, everything was restored double. I speak to you tonight. May this life of God come over you. May this life, may this breath, may this breath. Now, as you raise your hands, I want you to take a deep breath in and out. That's it. Take that deep breath now. That's it.